Hi friends, I'm Ernie Ramirez, Carver Cultural Center Supervisor, uh, and welcoming you tonight to another exciting Thayet Talk brought to you by the Carver Center San Antonio and Ruby City Contemporary Arts Center. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We're very excited to have you. Tonight we've got a very, very special guest with us who we're thrilled to have. Uh, she's gonna talk about her work, her process, what inspires her, and what's next. Uh, so without further ado, our guest tonight is an Afro-Latina interdisciplinary artist whose work focuses primarily on women of all ages in our community. She's a self-taught animation artist, video and audio editing artist, and her animation and performance videos have been screened in festivals and exhibitions here in San Antonio and all over the country. Her recent large-scale multifaceted portraits entitled The Glorious Way She Moves, which was on display here at the Carver Center, celebrates Black women as they move and navigate through their paths and the complexities of this world. Please welcome our good friend, a self-proclaimed locarita, the powerful Barbara Felix. Welcome. Are you there, Barbara? I don't know why, I can't hear you. Oh, that's what this, because the mute button was still on. Sorry. There you are. I'm glad I can hear you. Welcome, Barbara. Hi. Here. Hi, so, so nice to have you. So without further ado, uh, let's let's start our Thayet talk. So I consider you to be such a phenomenal creative, and I think there's so many different things that you could have mastered or would have mastered, but why art? Um, well, uh, I've, I've been creative most of my life, but I just uh, didn't know that I had um, any kind of drawing skills um, until college. Um, I, I, I used to like to draw as a child, but my um, older brother, seven years older than me, was an, a fantastic artist. And um, I, one time my mother, uh, she praised a, a piece of mine. She gave me praise, you know, oh, Miha, that's really nice. And then she saw his piece and she got really excited. And I thought, okay, my work isn't that good. So I kind of just like turned off the art interest completely until college when I was going to go into interior design and took a few drawing classes and one of them was the figure and I totally uh, fell in love and, and I could actually, I, I could see my potential. Like I'm, I don't think I drew as good then as I do now, but I could see my potential that I had some skill that I didn't know I had. And so I had to pursue it. I, I just had to, but it, it's been a long journey. I, Initially, I didn't know what to do with that skill, so I thought I'd do graphic design so people could tell me what to draw, and I'd draw their ideas instead of mine since I didn't have any initially. But then if you take college courses and, you know, they really focus on ideas in college, um, I started realizing that I did have ideas, and I started to really want to do fine art more, but I was so far into my graphic design degree that I was encouraged to just finish that. So then I've had to just find other avenues to pursue art on my own. And I've had a lot of, I've had a lot of detours in my life that kept me from, um, you know, really fully um, realizing it. Um, traveling, moving, because I lived in Hawaii, I lived in Corpus, I um, lived in Austin, um, all the moves and just different uh, things in our, in our, in the life of my, me and my husband. But eventually I, um, when we came back here, which I started when I was in Hawaii. The very end, the last two years in Hawaii, I started to try to get back into art over there. I took a couple of classes and I got invited to have my first solo show over there in Hawaii um, after just like three classes with this one uh, man who, who was the director at Hawaii Community College in, um, in, the, in uh, the leeward side of the island. Uh, he uh, you know, said, hey, you've got something here. I want to show your, you want to show work. You need 10 paintings. And you got like, I had three months to do them from November to um, the spring when he told me, you know, I would have my show. And I thought about it for like 10 seconds. And I'm like, yes, let's do it. You know, so I just jumped into it. And uh, so I, I, that was one thing that kind of helped me think, you know, 
I, sh I really should keep pursuing this. And then later it was um, uh, coming back to San Antonio. Uh, I started taking classes at the Southwest School of Art. And um, I would say that, that that school has just been a tremendous source of inspiration for me to push myself even more and more than I thought I could go, you know, um, uh, and to, to pursue art uh, and to follow like footsteps of, of, of artists like well, my mentors, <laughs> so let's start right there. So Sauter was a mentor, Margaret Craig's been a mentor, um, Sabra Booth's been a mentor to me, uh, Sylvia Benitez has been a mentor to me. There's just been a lot of people that have encouraged me um, and told me that they see, they could see that I had something. And I so, was myself more. Okay, sorry to cut you off. Um, just curious, um, now that you've mentioned all of that, like what, what brings you here? What brings you back? Talk about what inspires you and keeps bringing you back to that art. Uh, it just, I, it, I, I just uh, need to, I just, I'm just, I want to draw the figure so much. I mean, I just think about it all the time and I, I feel like I learn so much about myself when I'm drawing people. And I'm a very social person anyway. I, mean, I just love, I, I, I have a very diverse group of friends and stuff. And I think just wanting to tell their stories um, uh, and just celebrate people that I know and care about is kind of one of the things that keeps bringing me back to it. You know? And it's just, I think, as I've, as I've read about other artists too, I think I understand it's this thing that you just have to do. Like, I can't tell you that I've sold a ton of work and stuff. Uh, or, you know, especially working big scale, like I've been working, uh, but it doesn't stop me. I still, it's just, just this inner passion I have to uh, just explore and just find my own voice in, in drawing and painting. So self, self portraits and I guess portraiture in general are kind of your thing. That's something that you're, you're known for, it's your trademark. Uh, as we can see in your background, that, that you've got a uh, you know, beautiful moving portrait there. Um, how have portraits and self-portraits played a role in your work? Um, so, uh, I, first of all, I'm an, an available model at any time of day or night. I don't have to pay my <laughs> Um That's one of the reasons why I used me, I used me a lot in the beginning. Uh, uh, and once, and I still use myself on occasion for different projects, especially if the project is something that I feel is, I don't know, just something where I'm afraid to ask somebody else to do it. I feel like I should, I should do this because I, I, I don't care. I don't care what I do to myself, you know, or whatever. I'm, I'm willing to experiment on myself. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, uh. Let me show you some of my self-portrait work and show you that. Um, so just, I didn't know what to do for my first series and I took a class at Southwest School and Chris Sauter, who was my mentor, told me that I should do self-portrait work. And that's actually kind of like where it really started me think, the thought of me using myself for a series came to be. And I had started watching uh, dance shows um, like, so you think you dance was my favorite one. Um, and I, I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a dancer. I thought about dance as a, as a side career, uh, in college, but I was in a car accident. I broke my back. Uh, um, and dance as a profession was just not something I was going to be able to pursue. And watching that show, I saw these dance, these young aspiring serious dancers and thinking, you know, God, that could have been me, you know, I could have done that, you know. And I just got this desire to draw what I was watching on TV. So I started, um, let me, let me, let me do a screen share real quick. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, one second. Uh, Okay. Uh, these, this, so I, I, I have this series that's called Bailando con mi misma. It's dancing with myself, um, and it's I appropriated the bodies of couple dancers, 
uh, from these t from the TV shows, largely from that show that I watched. But even sometimes I would just find images of dancers on the internet. I usually sought out professional dancers, and I would swap out my face for their face uh, because I didn't have permission to draw them. I was afraid I'd get in trouble, and so I thought, well, well use me. Why don't I just use myself? Yeah. So I would take I I. I would take a ton of pictures of myself. I mean, literally, like for this pose here, I literally laid on a chair backwards and photographed my face upside down so that I could get the face in the right way because I also know enough that when you turn your head in different directions and stuff, your face changes. I mean, your, the shapes on your face are not the same this way as they are this way or as they are, you know, your, your muscles do different things. So. I took all these different pictures. I have, I have like probably, you know, a couple, few hundred pictures of my face <laughs> uh, that I've taken to create this work here. And then um, I also uh, started realizing as I, as I was doing the work that um, there was a lot more things that it made me think about and made me feel like I was exploring in the work, like sexuality, um, the, you know, us as humans and our uh, inner, inner uh, masculine and feminine sides and made me think about uh, courting and romance and how dance is almost like a, a ritual for, can be a ritual for, 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 for romantic connection. <laughs> and uh, so I just, you know, again, these were just poses from dance shows. <laughs> It's just my face is on them. You know, I just happened to like, I would videotape and I would take still frames and I would find frames that I liked that I thought were interesting. Um, and I would then try to do my own version. Sometimes I changed my expression from what the dancer's expression was as I took my photos of myself to do this work. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, I, I, some of the pieces are, uh, to me, just are about celebrating the joy of dancing, like the one on the left. Um, and some of them, to me, feel like there's a little, little bit more of a passion, um, uh, sexuality, sensuality um, side to them, like the one on the right, Dominante. And I, uh, because they were self-portraits, uh, in my titles, I just tried to do like a play on words, and I just really liked the way uh, the uh, titles in Spanish to me sound so much more interesting than they did in English. So mm -hmm. I, my Spanish is not as great as it should be. I should speak fluent Spanish, but I wasn't raised. My mother didn't teach me Spanish. She, I think it was her secret code language for us not to know what, you know, what she was talking about sometimes. But, oh, yeah. but I, but she did, um, she did, she did, uh, uh, I get to be, I got to be around it. And my oldest sister is fluent. So I would work on the titles with my oldest sister. We would talk about the art and look at them and we'd come up with these titles together, you know, and try to sometimes to make them cheeky or, or, you know, just interesting for the pieces. This particular slide shows a little bit of my process. These images are watercolor monotypes. So I uh, draw on plastic, on a plastic paper called Yupo, um, which actually um, I use for a lot of things, a lot of different uh, art that I make. And uh, I'll, I'll draw usually black line, the black line work that you see the, on the one on the right, I draw on Yupo, on trans, usually I use the translucent one. And then the one on the, on the left, you'll see that, that plate uh, standing up on the, that I'm holding uh, that's translucent or transparent is where I, the ink, I used a litho lithography ink, which is oil-based and my line work is watercolor. So I print the, I print the color first and then I print the black on top of it on the printing wow. press. So that's, that's my process for making these pieces. Um, and I, I really liked it because it uh, lets me keep, I like, I love gestural drawing. I love drawing really quick and fast and loose and lines that are kind of like gritty and just not perfect. Um, and I, I, I just feel like they're just so much more expressive um, for me than any other thing that I do. And so it was a way for me to make the line work the star of the work while still having some color in the work. Um, and so uh, 
yeah, uh, this, this is a whole series. And you might ask, well, I'll let you see if you ask me questions as you, if, if you have any questions as you are looking at these pieces about my techniques, but I've been, uh, oh, I also sometimes add uh, acrylic to them. So you can mm -hmm. see it's really shiny. Um, where I added acrylic, and usually I didn't use the clothes that the model the models were wearing completely. I kind of changed things up a little bit when I'm doing my drawings. So like the one on the right with the skirt with the little balls, that that is not what the what that dancer was wearing. I I kind of came up with the outfit uh, myself. I used to sew. So as a, as a, in in high school and and junior high, I, did, I made used to make a lot of my own clothes. So I I do definitely have an eye, somewhat of an eye for fashion. And love playing in that space a little bit. This gave me that ability to do that work. Um, I don't so much have have any questions, but uh, a comment on on just the progression in, in that short span of a few years. What seems like, you know, you started doing this about seven years ago or so, and then you know, even over the cor course of a couple of years, I can see that progression of of how tight your work has gotten, and it it, it feels like you've got your own kind of signature look that kind of developed over the course of that time. Um, yeah, I, I, I've, I've really enjoyed this series and it's not, I haven't been working with this particular Bailando Feminismo series that much, but it's not, I would say it's not over. I definitely want to do more work, more of this self-portrait work. Mm -hmm. um, something about, there's something about using, my, like, because people ask me, why aren't you painting you and your husband? You know, why aren't, why aren't the couple of you and your husband? I said, well, because I feel like that's almost personal, that yeah. people don't connect to it enough. I think by using my own face uh, on both subjects, it, there's something about it that makes it access, more accessible for other people. Um, I have had, you know, people ask me about themes in the work, and I just, again, I, I explore my masculine and feminine side that all humans, you know, they, they say we all have. And, um, and I think about things like um, courting and dating. And, uh, you know, it makes me think about how, I can say the very first time I drew one of these, I was like, ooh, that's kind of weird. I'm holding myself like that. That's kind of like, ooh, I'm kind of uncomfortable looking at this piece. It's making me feel, you know. <laughs> who, who better to know how to hold you other than yourself? <laughs> right. And then I, but then I realized that, uh, that I could then step away from that and I could see the work and it was almost like an outer, outer body experience to see, to look at this work as I was making it. Like I, mm -hmm. I could, I could disconnect myself. Yeah. So speaking of, of themes, uh, I, I can tell your work is very thematic and um, I, I know that there's elements of sexism and racism involved in your work. What kind of influence do those have on, on what you do? Um, so first of all, I'm a woman. Um, I am a black woman and I'm a Latina woman. I'm, you know, like the trifecta of things that are <laughs> dealing with racism and, and, and sexism, you know, uh, I mean, all, all, all across the board. So uh, just thinking, I like to make my work be work that is empowering uh, uh, for not just myself, but even when I paint other women, um, I want that, I definitely want to show our power. Uh, I want to, I want my work to transcend social stereotypes. Um, I want to show that beauty resonates with the whole woman. Um, you know, and that's kind of why I like drawing the full figure. Um, Cause I do, have this sense that I, I, my own feeling is that uh, our whole body tells a story of who we are, not just our faces. Our face is a huge part of it, obviously, but our whole body, the way we walk, the way we move, you know, the way we hold ourselves. And that's largely why I love drawing the figure and just trying to bring out what is unique about each person I draw. Uh, so those things I, I think, um, you know, I think my work has the power to make connections with all people. Like, you know, anybody could look at the work and it wouldn't, it doesn't necessarily matter the color of the, of the model that I'm painting. Everybody could find a connection. It's, you know, something human. We all, 
we all feel, uh, you know, the same basic, we all have the same basic human needs and feelings. And I'm just hoping that my work can help bridge, bridge, be a bridge for people and, and, and help people, you know, connect to our, our, our common humanity. Excellent. Well, well, before I forget to mention it, uh, I should uh, state that uh, if there are any questions that, that people have, please uh, list them in the comments uh, so we can uh, get those sent over to you uh, towards the end of our presentation. I uh, would love to be able to give our viewers a chance to ask you uh, some questions if, if we don't have it to answer them uh, through the course of this interview. But um, speaking of the piece that you've got on display right behind you, I'm, I'm very impressed by the sheer scale of your work and, and the size. I don't think uh, people who may have not seen this, this piece in person realize how ginormous it really is. And um, I know you've got it blown up, you know, for, for your background, but in, in person, this piece is, is gigantic. And I'd like to know what is the significance of this size of the scale in your work? So, uh, that uh, just was, uh, I really like the idea of magnifying, <laughs> of magnifying people, of magnifying what I think is wonderful and beautiful and great about them. Um, uh, so I uh, tend to, I, I, the, the large scale drawing is actually new for me. It wasn't something that I started, but I have always drawn, done larger than most people do work. Like, the sheets of UPO that I bought were like 31 inches by 29 or 25 inches. And I always use the whole, I often use the whole sheet or half a sheet. I never really went smaller than that. I just tended to like to draw big. And I got some advice, I, I received some advice and some um, opportunities I had to talk, to speak with curators um, through uh, a curatorial insights event that uh, Sylvia Benitez put together that, uh, they told me, you know, they loved, they loved what I was doing. They could, they could feel that I was going somewhere with the work I was doing. I think initially I wasn't doing self-portraits. What I showed them was not self-portraits, but it was dance-based work. And they were saying, you really should go bigger. And uh, I had the opportunity to take a class just to learn a few techniques for doing larger scale work with Chris Sauter. And um, that was about two years ago. And I, that, with this, uh, my newest series, which is The Glorious Way She Moves, which are, are there, the, these are the largest works I've done. Um, I can share this work now. Um, I had uh, uh, just really a lot of fun thinking, I, I, I had a couple of photo shoots that I set up and uh, where, I, where I, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do. I knew, I had a feeling I was gonna work large scale. I didn't know how large, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna do seated poses or I, I had this idea about having women dance and, and, and doing something with them in motion. And uh, I, I decided to, you know what, I'm just gonna set up a photo shoot to capture everything and I'll figure it out. I'll figure out what I'm gonna do. So I had, uh, someone helping me, Shel Delaney, helping me with um, photo, still photos. And I was in another room, I set up a green screen and I, um, and I photographed women dancing and moving for me. Uh, I, every, it seemed like everybody I reached out to said yes, only a couple people at the last minute were not able to come that had intended to show up. And um, I, I just told him, you know, play, I'm going to play a song for you, whatever song you like. I want you to be comfortable dancing to something. I, I already knew in my mind that you were not going to want to, um, it might, some people might be shy. Some people might be fine with it. Some people might be really shy. But I knew that in the length of a three to five minute song, they would loosen up and I could draw them bigger. So uh, anyway, I, I mean, I could, I could get, capture their emotion and then, Drawing large scale just gives me a chance to magnify, uh, magnify that emotion that they have and their feeling and their personality. I just really wanted to, to just make them bigger than life. And, and in particular, Glory Jones was one of the ones. She's her this her portrait is one of my largest ones. 
It's an eight foot tall by five foot wide portrait. Uh, she's a tall woman. She came into the studio. I, I actually, most of the people that I painted for this series, I know, but there were a few people that I had just met and I just saw there was something about them that I saw and I said, hey, you know, would you be interested in doing your portrait? So she was one of the ones who, who I didn't know very well. And she came in with this really cool outfit with her combat boots and cool laces. And she had this just smile that just lit up the whole studio. And I said, that's got to be one of my big ones. And it's just, I, I got to uh, accentuate her height. I mean, I just really need to because uh, it's just beautiful. She's just a beautiful girl. And um, anyways, that's how I, that's kind of how it started um, mm. from me taking a class and from um, me uh, just thinking about how I wanted to draw these women. This was actually this portrait of Gracie Poe, she was the first woman that I drew. And uh, I drew her uh, a little bit differently than all the other portraits. I mean, I really went full on gesture, loose drawing style on her portraits. So they're not necessarily super um, uh, photorealistic. It's more like her essence is in my drawings. And mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but I decided she was going to be big. And when I took the class, I, I drew her, this one I drew, I started it in class. I finished it on my own, but I started it in a class. And I remember taking a whole wall, like everybody else was taking sections of walls. And I just stretched my paper on the whole wall and I just went for it. You know, I was even dancing in, as I was drawing on her. <laughs> I danced yeah. at the same time with Gracie. And uh, this was the final, the way the portrait came out. Uh, me playing with scale and with proportion and just uh, uh, you know foreground background and uh, the pattern on her dress that she happened to come in with African dress um, and she was she's a, she's a seventy she's in her seventies in her late seventies and she was so vivacious so exciting to watch her dance and the whole dancing thing. Uh, uh, came it was almost like by accident I was going uh -huh. to see photos of her and at the last minute um, well I was setting stuff up for the seated photos and I had some music playing and she started dancing and I, 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 I looked at her and I said hey would you mind if I videotape you dancing and she goes no you know she's like no oh. so so she danced to I think it was happy feeling by earth Wind and fire uh -huh. and uh, I still remember uh, and and she let me, I had, I had a, a still camera and I had me with my iPhone and I just went to town just trying to record her, capture her and her movements. And, um, and I decided to make this one, you know, just big. It's 10 feet by five feet. It's my, it's one of my two largest pieces. Incredible. Yeah. I remember that one in the gallery. It took up, it took up a whole wall. It was huge. Um, and so speaking of kind of the ever changing, evolving, work this exhibit that we had here was was kind of intricate in its own right where people could could scan the qr code and then um interactively hear from the subjects themselves can you tell us a little bit about that yeah i actually had started doing that with my uh, previous series that i'm still working on which is called the color of women um and i just there's something about i i i think it's because of my glasses i have very poor eyesight and uh, my sound, my memory is so connected to sound. And I love, like, I love, I love listening to different kinds of music and I love listening to stories. And I just got this idea of, you know, yeah, I could, I could call them and I could talk to them and I could have them write me something or I could, you know, write down what they, about who they were in their lives. But I thought it would be so much cooler to hear their voices. I just felt like it would give my work another life uh, an extra life you know um and so uh or another dimension since you know another sensory dimension to have sound with it so for these ones um i it was all zoom interviews i did zoom interviews and then i edited myself out of the interviews so that you only hear them and i asked them questions about their lives and also because my subject matter on this was dance how they felt about dance and movement and really, every single one to me is 
they're just wonderful to listen to. Um, I was, I'm hoping, you know, that when people got to hear them, I was hoping that people would want to go home and put on some music and dance when they, after hearing, hearing, uh, hearing what they were saying and seeing the imagery together. So now that we're talking about different uh, technologies and, and things that you've incorporated into your work, um, green screens, video, audio, um, what do you enjoy most of, about, you know, that type of art? Uh, I enjoy the challenge. I, I love a challenge. Uh, it's, it's a, I'm a self-taught in, in video. Um, and so I have to be, you know, there's not a lot of people that I know in that space. And I know that everybody that I know in that space is really busy doing their own thing. So a lot of times I'm kind of like, just, I just got to figure it out, you know, and I, and I love problem solving. And, you know, there's nothing like the video space to, to give you some serious problem solving <laughs> when you're doing stuff. And uh, so that's one of the reasons why um, I love the video challenges so much. And then I just, uh, I just think that it's a really cool um, ultra sensory experience when you, to watch video work. I'm very inspired by all the limitless possibilities, um, things that I see other local artists or, or other artists doing with video. It's just, it's just so, it's, it's just such an exciting area to work in. Can we see some of your video work? Yeah, uh, give me one second here. I have, uh, let, me, let me get to a video section. All right. Uh, So, uh, I was in I, I was in Luminaria in 2016. Uh, I had just had a solo show. The the curator from that show asked me. This is how I got into video, doing video as an art form. Um, she had just told me, "Hey, Barbara, Luminaria is going to be at the Carver this year. The Carver is about dance and theater." Your work's about dance. This would be so perfect if you could figure out a way to get in Luminaria. I had less than two weeks to apply. <laughs> but, wow. Yeah. Okay, so I, I uh, thought of an idea. Uh, I reached out to a friend that did projection work. I uh, uh, Then after talking to him, I thought, you know what? I, originally, I was trying to figure out how to project my self-portrait dance pictures to something I could project on a wall or something for Luminaria. And I thought, no, no. I, think I want to do something bigger. I want to do animation and I don't want to draw me. I'm tired of drawing myself. I want to draw other people. So I reached, I found a cure, a choreographer, first person uh, that I, that I called, which was Amber Ortega said yes. Um, and then I found we needed somebody to videotape the choreography she would do for us to work from. So I knew James A. Borrego who's the brother of Jesse Borrego. He uh, is also an instructor at UTSA, or he was an instructor at the time. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna reach out to, to James. And he said, sure, you know, so that we had this collaboration and this project, The Proximity of Being was born. Uh, mm -hmm. This project is about every person's need for solitude and connection. I, when I, I spoke with Amber and, you know, she loved the concept and I said, I'm, you know, you are the choreographer. You're going to come up with the choreographer of this. I'm not a choreographer. That's your, that's your piece of this. And then James and um, John and I will do the rest. And uh, John had this great idea to do the projection on a pyramid of cubes, uh, multi-projectors. So it was, it was an expensive project, uh, projector-wise, um, mm -hmm. uh, filming and everything, but it was just wonderful. So let me show you a little piece of the proximity of being.
incredible, incredible. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. And uh, now that I know um, your next installation at the Carver is going to be purely video. Yeah, we we uh, it was a nine foot pyramid of cubes on a on a two foot platform, so it was large and. Um, it took a while to program that night. We were all like anxiously waiting for it to start um, because the, the projectionist had to literally he had to program a video on every angle of those cubes. What was really cool was just depending on what you, where you stood, left or right or center, you saw something different. And um, it was just incredible. It was breathtaking to see it live in that scale, in that space at Dignity Park where, where it was shown. Um, I'll never just I'll never forget that experience of that video and even the, the, the friends I made and the connections I made in that collaboration project are, you know, something that I'll have forever. Amazing. And so after, you know, I'm, I'm somebody goes into Luminadia and, and sees uh, this uh, exhibition, what kind of experience do you think or do you want the viewer to walk away with after seeing something like this or any of your work? Oh gosh, well, because it, it's hard to say for any of my work because sometimes my work has different, um, there's different things I'm trying to get out of it. You know, some, a lot of, I am very, a person who really thinks a lot about human relationships and connection and things like that. But, you know, sometimes I'm thinking about other things like, um, uh, telling a story about an experience that might be difficult to talk about or, 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 or um, so it just depends on what I'm work what what the piece is about but definitely I like people to feel something to have some sort of emotional connection or maybe it reminds them of uh, something that they experienced before I know that a lot of my self portrait work a lot of people come to me with a dance work and they'll tell me um, yeah, you know, I can remember a time in my life, you know, when I was, you know, out doing, you know, just gave me the strong memory of something that I've done before. So um, that's, uh, that's really, you know, a, emotion and connection and just feeling something very human in my work is what I hope for. Yeah. So that being said, uh, is there one work of yours in particular that you're most proud of or that you would consider to be your favorite? Um, it's, you know, I, I don't know that I have one favorite um, because <laughs> uh, I, I do, when I do things, and that's not everything that I do. I don't think everything I do is amazing, but when I do something that feels amazing to me, I'm just like in awe. I can't believe I did it. You know, I just, I, cause I, cause I, cause I came into making art so late. And then it took me even longer once I knew I wanted to do it. I mean, it took me almost 20 years to get here, um, mm. or maybe more than 20 years to get where I'm at right now, uh, just because of different life experiences. But I, I would say um, the proximity of being is definitely one of them. Um, I have a portrait of my father uh, that I can show you. Um, if I can escape out of this to get to that slide. Re, uh, uh, the university hospital opened a clinic for my father uh, in my father's name. My father oh, wow. was OBGYN. Um, let me uh, get the viewer. View present. Uh, it, my father was an OBGYN. He delivered over 14,000 babies in his career. He worked oh. on the west side of town. He had a downtown office off of Augusta and McCullough, right close to the Southwest School of Art. Um, and he, uh, I think the Baptist Hospital is where he did a lot of his deliveries, but I know it wasn't the only place. Um, he broke a lot of ground for other uh, uh, black doctors, black physicians. I mean, he was actually, you know, one of the ones um, who you know, broke down some of the uh, walls that were standing uh, against doctors in Jim Crow. I think for San Antonio, I think I recall he is the first black doctor to practice in every major hospital in San Antonio and do surgeries in every major hospital in San Antonio is where he was. So anyway, the university hospital honored him with a clinic, the first clinic of its kind on the east side of San Antonio. And I just happened to meet uh, Allison Hayes Lane. Uh, she, we were chatting and she, you know, I told her, yes, uh, that I'm his daughter. I was, I, I hear you're doing this clinic and you're going to be looking for art and I'm his daughter. And, 
I do, I do mm. portrait, or figurative, figurative work. And she goes, oh, we need to ask you to do your father's portrait for us. So um, I, oil painting is my first love. Uh, mm -hmm. The only reason I don't do it right now is because I have a full-time job and uh, it takes me a long time to do oil painting. Uh, so I tend to do things that are more immediate, like watercolor, acrylic, and other things, collage. Um, mm -hmm. But I said, this has to be an oil painting. And uh, I used a photograph of him uh, that was actually taken for a calendar. I tried, I looked everywhere for photos and the, the main reason why I wanted this photo was because it had his hands in it. And I felt like his hands brought in so many babies and mm. into the world. Um, and so, yeah, I, I wanted to make him real. The, the photograph was black and white. So all the color work is mine. You know, it's me, uh, me working with the color uh, and deciding that, you know, a lot of royalty sit in red chairs. So the, I think the chair actually was more of a golden color chair, like a, a soft, like tan. And I decided to use red because it's just more regal. And um, the tie he's wearing, it's actually a UNICEF tie that he had that he, he loved. And I thought it was a great tie that he happened to be wearing because he was bringing children in the world and that, you know, had little kids on it. I love it. hands came out. Um, I'm sorry, could you remind us where this is on display? Yes, it's so the clinic, it's the Robert Ellen Hilliard Community Health Center. And it's mm -hmm. on, uh, it's off of Walter's. Um, near that McDonald's on Walters and 35. Uh, oh, uh -huh. I know when you go down Walters, there's a, a small street um, and you can go down that little street takes you straight to the clinic. And uh, you can, his portrait is in the lobby of the, of the clinic. Okay. I also did two other portraits. Well, I'll get to them in just a second. This is a, um, this actually is where I started to do some collage work for a, um, my color of women body of work. What mm -hmm. I'm trying to get to though, is to show you these two, um, these two portraits that I know don't get a lot of visibility, but the university, they, they're owned by the university hospital. Also they're inside. Like if you go there and you said, I would love a tour of the art. Cause there's incredible, there's a lot of incredible artwork from uh, San Antonio artists and even Houston artists that did a wonderful mosaic that's in the lobby. Um, these two are in the, the two portraits I'm going to show you are in the back. Um, and they're, they're also kind of a, uh, where I was kind of developing my technique for collage and watercolor. Um, I have these two of my two sister-in-laws. I decided, you know, they said we, they were going to get, buy two images from me. And I said, well, my self-portrait dancers for a hospital are too sexy. So. <laughs> to uh, do women that I knew that were in medicine in my own family. These are my sister-in-laws. So what's the yeah. position? Yeah. Uh, this is another collage piece that um, I did for the city of San Antonio um, of Danielle Hargrove for their military show. Um, it was um, City of Service. Um, they asked me to do a portrait of a black woman in the military. Um, mm -hmm. And I I asked, I, I did some uh, interviews with like four women. One of the women that I was interested in doing, I couldn't because she worked for the Carver and it was a conflict of interest. She worked for the city. <laughs> but mm -hmm. I found Danielle Hargrove, who is a San Antonio girl, born and raised here. And she was a captain and she um, winded up, uh, she's a, a, a kind of works with litigation or mitigation. Um, and she's in like in the law law field in the and so she's she's pretty amazing and this was a, a portrait i did of her for that this is a, a one more collage piece that i did it was a commission of a wedding portrait oh, wow. that i i want to show you the the color of women work since i'm in talking about this collage work um yeah that also has some technology in it. It's actually, these are the pieces where um, I started uh, adding uh, audio. Very cool. My work. Um, uh, this is, uh, I was looking for, I wanted this work to be about friendships, about people with relationships between women. So I looked for women that I knew were very close friends and I mm -hmm. would have them come and I would have them have conversation in front of me. 
you know, to, to talk about stuff, use their body. I wanted to capture the way they stood, the way they held themselves and stuff in their, in their, in their conversation. And then I made these, uh, these are watercolor monotypes. So I did the paintings on UPO and then uh, the portrait parts anyway. And then I transferred them to regular paper uh, through that printing press that you saw earlier. That same press is what I used to transfer these images. And then I do a lot of collage. There's hand stitching and stuff to make these portraits. And, I, and the, they're on a wood panel that I uh, would paint through lace. I just really wanted to make them ultra feminine and, um, and just beautiful. That's incredible. So this is another one, Becky and Tara that I, it's the same, uh, I only have done three of these so far. I, I, I want to do more and unfortunately COVID's kind of making it put a, a damper in this work for me, in this pair of women work, but hopefully eventually I'll be able to do more of it. But these have audio. So I had the women, um, at the time I wasn't sure how I was going to do the audio work. And so I just had them leave me voicemails. I told them, Hey, leave me a voicemail. Don't uh, tell the other woman what you're going to say, but tell me how you feel or your thoughts about the woman that you're with in this portrait. And then I would, uh, you know, clean up the audio and I put the two audio files together and you could hear them talk about their friendship to each other. That is so cool. And that, that this one here, this is actually of my sisters um, who are my, they're my youngest sisters and they are like best friends. And mm. I've watched their, even as sisters, I've watched their relationship and I think it's just such a beautiful relationship. And both of them happened when they sent me their audio. I was only going to put them in this portrait, but when they sent me their audio, they were both talking about their daughters and how their daughter's relationship mirrored theirs. So I'm like, well, I got to put these girls in this portrait. I have to, they have to be included. So uh, right. I had a deadline. So I decided to uh, do the daughters as these silhouettes but where you could see their portrait, their, their faces, who they were. Um, but, but they're being talked about. So that's why they're more like silhouetted in this portrait. Um, well. So I know this, this may seem like a weird question, but is there anything that you dislike about your work? Um, I, the things I don't like is when I'm a little, overly stiff you know if my work gets too if i overwork something or it's too stiff then i get very very frustrated like i can i've come to a place in my life where i can tell when something is got some magic to it and when it's like mm. hashtag fail <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and so, so that's very good that's probably the thing that i most dislike is you know uh, i don't mind the challenge i mean i don't challenges make me a little crazy, but I don't really don't mind having to figure something out or experiment. And I understand that sometimes you're going to have fails with that, especially if I have a deadline <laughs> or something, you know, that's, that could get very stressful. Um, so that, that's probably what I would say I don't like about my work is whenever that happens. Tell us about some some real life situations that inspired your work. I mean, earlier you mentioned uh, this a uh, tragic car accident that you were involved in when you were younger. Um, is there anything else that kind of happened in your life that it inspires what you still do today? Um, well, the times we're in right now inspire are starting to inspire, you know, I mean, I, I, I wanted to say that these three series would be the only series I might have that I would have, but, um, and that video space is a place where I would experiment. Who knows, I might wind up coming with another series because I, I feel like there's a lot going on in the country. And you know, how can I, like again, think about doing something that helps our country heal, that helps bring people together, that helps us remember uh, our common humanity and things like that. Um, one of the projects that I've had, uh, that I got to do this year um, was a video project. Uh, uh, it was for Luminaria, but it was actually someone else's Luminaria project and she was bringing in people to collaborate. So she was working actually with a team project, but she asked two other artists to, besides herself, to also participate. And the project was on belonging. Uh, the, the theme was, came, uh, was uh, the theme for it uh, was uh, kids, teens came up with a theme and they were mm -hmm. inspired by 
by the DACA situation. They were inspired by, I mean, it was when the first kind of like uh, in 20, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago, just some it, things that were happening in, in the news uh, with that and a lot of tension that was and, and fears. Uh, they were very inspired. So, but we could do about our project about anything, but I decided to do mine on the DACA situation. So I, um, I happened to have this video footage. It was an experimental film of me uh, taking myself in a hallway of a house I was going to move into, uh, barefoot, walking on the on the popcorn ceilings like a dum dum. But uh, it was my husband said the lights coming in really cool, and uh, you I know you like to, you know, take weird pictures and stuff, so you might want to go there and take pictures. So I took my video camera and a tripod and I filmed myself moving up and down the space and mm -hmm. in different speeds. And then I used that footage along with poetry that my sister and I co-wrote that's bilingual, that um, is spoken in the, in the voice of uh, the person who wants to stay here, you know, the DACA, the, the DACA individual, or we thought actually that it could, it could apply to refugees or anybody who doesn't want to be displaced from their home, from the place that they love. Um, so that was one of the one of the things that I've worked on. Gotcha. Can you tell us um, what the best piece of advice that you've been given regarding your work and, and art in general? Um, yeah, don't say you can't do something. Say you can and figure it out. Um, that piece of advice was given to me when I was taking some computer graphic design classes in Hawaii so I could get a job in my field because that was the one piece I didn't have at the time and no one would hire me without some computer skills. And she told me, you know, she, ne she just says, don't, don't say no, just say, just figure it out. And I never thought of that. I used to say, you know, if I couldn't do it, I would tell people, sorry, I'm not, you know, and after she said that to me and opened up that idea, boy, um, so many opportunities have come my way from that. And so much growth and learning has come to me from, from not saying no and figuring things out. And, and especially today, you can figure out, there's a, there's a, you want to do something, there is a YouTube video out there <laughs> that you can find that'll help you figure out how to do it. <laughs> so there's so many people sharing, uh, right now. Um, so that would be my piece of advice. Gotcha. And that, that would be the same to uh, advice that you would uh, give to an aspiring artist, whether it was a young budding artist or somebody who's starting later in life, would that be the same thing you'd say? Or would you? I would, I would, add, I would probably uh, add and maybe make this, that you start from here and then do that other thing. Um, I, for me, uh, taking classes, taking a class, especially a physical class or a Zoom class or something um, where I could be connected to other people doing, making art was hugely important for me and, uh, and really helped me uh, to see possibilities. I could, uh, 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 watching other people work uh, inspired, you know, me to kind of figure out my own, my own mark, my own way of doing things. I learned from watching other people, my instructors, um, and I got a ton of wonderful networking. I mean, I think that's how slowly over time I've been able to get where, I, where I'm at today, where I'm uh, uh, being able to participate in exhibitions, sometimes being invited to in exhibitions, um, uh, learning about things like grants and things like that. I mean, it's been a progression, but it all started from taking a few classes and, and have, and making those initial connections and getting that inspiration. Um, that's what I would suggest. Excellent. Well, it, it looks like we're almost to the end of our time here, but I do want to take uh, some questions that uh, people are, are leaving in the, the comment section of uh, our Facebook page. Uh, we've got a question here from Asatu. It says, what have you not done that you'd love to do if time, money, and technology were unlimited? Oh, it would be, um, it would be sculpture. I, in my body, I, I mean, in my head, in my hands, would mm -hmm. feel like making a form. I did take a sculpture class. Um, at one sculpture class, I did try to do, um, 
a, a self cast of my face by myself. And then the class, we did some casts of my face because I wanted to know what a model would experience. But I would love to learn how to do full body casts. And even like for those portrait of those uh, color women portraits of the women standing in conversation, I would love to have like 3D versions of those, uh, you know, life size versions of those women that people could walk around. I think it would be very interesting to think about um, people feeling like if do, do, do they feel like they're inter in interfering in their space, you know, like they're, like they're a fly on the wall or they're uh, intruding or something, you know, I just think that there's so many possibilities with doing sculpture. Got you. Um, any final thoughts for us, Barbara? Um, just uh, that I'm uh, really grateful <laughs> for this <laughs> opportunity to talk. I hope I wasn't, I hope every, I hope people enjoyed what I showed. Um, and uh, I, I, I'm thankful for the Carver for the uh, exhibition I just recently had. Um, I'm extremely honored to be to be here, uh, especially on the heels of Andrea Vocab Sanderson and Jose mm. Villa, who I just, both of them are just forces in this community that I revere uh, completely. I just feel in awe that I'm even in here after them. <laughs> so um, uh, just, just be safe, everybody. Um, you know, try if we can to see some art and uh, please do it masked. Um, you know, and uh, and just be be safe, and and I just thank you. Thanks. Well, no, I, I think everyone loved what you shared. I think uh, if anything, uh, we would have loved to have seen more. So I don't know if you you have I anything could, else. I could, I could leave you with my ribbon dancer video. Uh, Let's which, do it. Okay. By the way, that's my own music. I make little songs on my iPhone with GarageBand, and that's one of my little songs <laughs> that I made. Of course you do, because you do it all. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really appreciate you taking the time to be with this evening, uh, with us this evening. If uh, people want to follow you, uh, where can they, they look you up? Uh, on Instagram, I'm at um, Proximity Art Media on Instagram. And then okay. uh, my website is my name, BarbaraFelix.com. Awesome, awesome work. If you want to see what I'm doing, I mean, I have a couple other Instagram accounts, but that's where you can see my art or my, uh, on Instagram, I tend to put more of my art experiments um, and things like that that I'm doing. Um, and then my actual body of work is on um, 
on uh, my website. And actually, the Carver's website still has my work live there. And that site has the, uh, of the portraits that I did. If you wanted to hear those wonderful audio files that I was mentioning, they're all linked on that site. Awesome, awesome. Well, again, we thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate your time. And special thanks goes out to the Carver Center San Antonio and Ruby City for uh, sponsoring these diet talks. We will see you guys next month. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.